Welcome, Welcome to Tenkara in, in Focus. Focus. This is the mini series focusing on fly tying. Um, quick recap. Yes. In episode one, we saw Paul's now legendary one thing whip finish. <laughs> it's almost like the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> um, we'll put some links around this video for parts one and two if you've not seen them. It's worth checking them out. Definitely. In part two, we saw a nice little trick of getting a very nice foundation when you start your whip when you start your whipping onto a fly. That yes. Sort of uh, lovely touching turns in quite an easy way. And in amongst both videos, we've sort of talked about how we got started with fly fishing, using flies, tying flies for ourselves. The big one of the big things for me is that just getting over that psychology. You know, several psychological speed bumps yeah. in the road yeah. from from using your first fly that's you know that you haven't tied mm. to actually then getting confidence in flies that you've made yourself um, through to then the building blocks of being able to do that. Yeah, we also talked about the ability to sort of improvise from patterns once mm. you've learned some key skills. But before that, we've got another key skill that will get you well on your way to tying. Paul said it. Um, if you can whip on, if you can whip finish, and if you can put some dubbing on, you can tie a fly. Yeah. Well, we've done the start, we've yeah. done the finish. So, shall we do the middle bit? <laughs> go on, then. I'll let you go for it. <laughs> if you're going to use a dubbing material for tying flies, you're going to need to know how to dub the material onto the thread. And the, pro the process is known as dubbing, and the material is known as dubbing because we dub it onto the thread. So, the material, the noun... Is dubbing and doing it the verb is dubbing um, one of the best tips I can give you it was a tip that was given to me when I was first learning to tie flies you can never put too little dubbing on at a time it's much easier to keep adding dubbing than it is to take it off once you've dubbed it on so as you get more experience and better at fly tying you'll be able to guess the right amounts of dubbing but don't be afraid to add a little bit later just sparing sparse amounts like this can be all you need. And there are many fly patterns, certainly historically in the West, where you just use the tiniest wisp of dubbing on the thread and you actually make a feature of the thread showing through as well. If you've never seen the pattern uh, water hem blower where it's got moles fur dubbed onto a thread, uh, just do a quick Google search for water hem blower and you'll see exactly what I mean, making a feature of thread and dubbing together. So it's up to you. You're tying your own flies that can be your interpretations, so you can put as much or as little dubbing as you like and whether or not you see thread that's entirely up to you so to the process of dubbing get your little wisp and put it against your thread like this then we're going to twist it onto the thread and this is where people who've watched videos online or time videos usually come unstuck because a lot of people interpret the motion i'm about to make as simply rolling backwards and forwards but it's not it's rolling in one direction then releasing then moving back rolling in the same direction then moving back rolling in the same direction so we're making this roll and when we do it fast it looks like we're twisting it backwards and forwards but we only ever twist in one direction it doesn't matter which direction once you start twisting, just keep twisting in the same direction. So I'm going to make, let me see if I can get that as visible as possible. I'm going to make a twist as I'm looking at it, it's going clockwise. Now already that started to stick to the thread. So if I twist a little bit further along now, I've twisted there, I'm going to move down just maybe five millimeters, twist again, move down a few millimeters more, twist again. And you'll start to form what we call a dubbing rope and you can go up and down just tighten it where you need to and we've formed a little rope of dubbing now you can see that's nowhere near the fly so it'll take me lots of turns to get that actually onto the body of the fly so the second trick to dubbing is to move the dubbing along your thread the way we do that is to use two or three fingers depends how much dubbing we've got and just gently press on the thread and then we can slide it until it's touching up to the fly body. You may want to just do a few extra turns just to get that dubbing tight. Then if you shorten your thread so you've actually got something to work with, that's another good tip. Get plenty of thread when you're dubbing the material on, but shorten it when you're ready to wrap it around. And you can see now we've got a rope of dubbing. Now as you wrap, 
sometimes things will start to work loose so it doesn't hurt to just put an extra turn or two as you're working on the dubbing but as you can see there there's a nice bit of dubbing we can put a hackle on there and a head after that and we've got a lovely body so that's dubbing pretty simple but uh, give it a try so I'm getting tired of giving you praises. That's another great demo. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, <laughs> it is the stuff that, you know, it can be overlooked, but it, it... That, that tip in there, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, dubbing means rolling backwards and forwards. That is the big stumbling block. Well, when what you, makes it difficult yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah, and you hear people struggling with some material, like Zenmai has a bad yeah, rep yeah, for dubbing. Yeah, yeah, people say it's tough to dub. If you use that method, not tough at all. Yeah. It's, it makes dubbing very, very simple. I think you've got to follow it to just exactly. So, you know, make sure you take in all that detail, follow it exactly. It's going to work for you yeah. brilliantly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we now got to the point, we've given you the power to create, you know, uh, an amazing fly just with those steps that we've gone through each of the three tutorials. Now that's a bit cruel because <laughs> you now need to know how to choose what fly, which one of your creations you're going to tie on when you rock up at the riverside. Um, but fortunately, and again, there's heavy handed plug for the book, How to Fool Fish with Simple Flies. Um, if you don't already have a copy, um, we'll certainly throw some links around uh, to, to let you get that. You'll also get a chance a little bit later on in this video um, to see it bundled up with some other stuff as well. But that is your route map. You know, we've given you the sort of the keys to, you know, to get through the door um, with the stuff we've gone through and then, you know, combining it with that. That knowledge is really what allows you to put in the next level hacks and tweaks and things that start to compound your success. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how do you then learn to tie each of the different fly patterns that suit the specific presentations yeah. that are designed to exploit particular conditions? And that's, that's really the holy grail is like yeah. taking conditions, deriving what presentations you need and then marrying that to the perfect fly pattern. Yeah. But you need to know how to tie each of those patterns. Yeah, we've got a, a selection, sort mm. of, you know, stay tuned. We've got a selection of <laughs> yeah. the sort of the full kind of roadmap to all Kibari, if you like. Yeah. And this is something that's taken us all around the world mm. and has given us some amazing fishing experiences in many different countries. Um, it's worth a look. Just let, let's have a look at Absolutely. some just relentless fishing pole. <laughs> yeah, let's not make any bones about it. You know, this is the proof of the pudding that, you know, we can talk all we like about, all oh, these are amazing and whatever else. But here's just some of our own selfish experiences that these patterns and uh, this knowledge has given us. <laughs>
So hopefully um, that wasn't too much of an indulgence on our part with um, you know showing you some of the great fishing that we've really been very, very fortunate to experience. Um, and it, it's more the idea that fishing and filming has taken us to those places rather than it being, you know, a kind of a real conscious effort on our part. Yeah, some of the filming has meant that we've been able to do less fishing than, than we'd like. Very true. That is the reason for being there. So the <laughs> fact that we can fish there, it's a vicious circle yeah, of uh, yeah, yeah. torture and, and delight. <laughs> But how can we be? How can we have that confidence to, to go to those places? And, and, and this stuff works for us wherever we go in the world and there's trout swimming in flowing water. How can we have that confidence and that arrogance, if you like, that what we're going to do, what we're going to bring is actually going to work for us? And part of that actually stems from not only the, the, the sort of reduced set of um, kind of approaches that we've refined down that we know work for fish, but also matching those to a kind of a universal go anywhere selection of flies. And that's just it, basically it's a, it's a dozen patterns uh, in a box. But even simpler than that, one layer down from that, it's really just four patterns with three variants in each in each pattern. And we find that that covers so much of what you encounter on stream especially when you know the individual tweaks that kind of compound the effectiveness of either the pattern or of the fly itself. And when you get those two things kind of working together in synergy, then that really starts to give you a lot of success and success does breed confidence in yourself. And that's the thing, we've, we've kind of, we've boiled it down to uh, a tried and tested approach and tried and tested patterns that we're happy to go anywhere with. Yeah. Things like pulsing a hackle are something that you get talked about in Tenkara a lot, but mm. it's not always demonstrated or you don't really get the sort of fly pattern explained as to why pulsing works or why you would tie the hackles in a certain way. And we've talked to anglers in Japan that use normally facing hackle for pulsing mm -hmm. because it pulses in a different way to the way a sarcassa or a reverse hackle pulses. Yeah. Um, but when you're pulsing a fly, it may even be that you're using a stiff hackle to create vibration like a V weight mm -hmm. near the surface. Mm -hmm. So these sort of uh, manipulations and pulsing and active presentations where you're not just dead drifting, they've all got little subtle mechanics and they're not just one set that it, that it becomes pulsing. No, but the thing that when I'm talking about the tweaks that compound that success, once you understand that, you know, mm. you can even use the way that you lay your thread turns on yeah. to maximize the response of a reverse hackle yeah. to pulsation. Yeah. So that's like that next level yeah. sort of, you know, additional yeah. sort of magic secret sauce that you can lay on it. Yeah. And that comes from tying. That doesn't come from the fishing side of it as well. Yeah. So that's where it kind of meshes together for me. Yeah, another great tweak in, in the tying is using your materials in a way where you make them more robust. Or if you have got a material that breaks up when it gets caught by a fish, you know, when the fish's teeth sort of get at it, use a material that breaks up in a way that makes things more attractive. So you, yes. you secure that material in a way that makes it more robust. And then when it does break, it becomes attractive, like the Karasu Kabari. We've, we've done a time for that in the past. Absolutely. Um, but, but these tweaks, they're, they're mechanical, they produce features that interact. But what I was going to say is, is that um, that particular tip is it's all in the tying, but that actually buys you more fishing time yeah. because you yeah. don't spend as much time biting or trimming flies off and changing them with a fly that's come completely unraveled and is now useless. Yeah. So it's time you can spend in the vice that will actually give you more time and more success on stream. Mm -hmm. You know, fly that's in the water catches the fish, right? So, you know, that <laughs> this is all the way that it is that very, very, and I've used the word a few times, but that synergy between the tying and the activity of catching fish, bringing those two close together, mm -hmm. it's really satisfying and it's really effective. So we've mentioned a couple of those tweaks there and the synergy between the sort of the fishing and the actual mechanics of tying. Um, we've walked you through some of the real fundamentals of how you can create your own flies from scratch as well and how satisfying that is. But if you're really serious about adding this to your game and adding it to the success that you bring on stream and your ability to teach others as well to have that same success, then a great pro tire like John can actually show you a whole suite of things that are just going to elevate your game so much. So let's run through some of those things now. Learn about functional hackling methods for the iconic reverse hackle patterns of Tenkara. Learn three different ways of winding and reinforcing peacock hurl and when to use them. 
learn about the different finishing positions for tying off flies, so you can choose what's best for your fly patterns. Learn about different finishing knots. Plus the complete guide to mastering the whip finish tool. Learn to tie stiff hackled wet flies for anchoring presentations. Believe us, there's a reason why these are the most popular Tenkara patterns in Japan. Also learn about John Hackled patterns, tying materials, choice, tips and advice, and more. So by taking those basic fundamental building blocks, you can actually adapt them to your own situations and have great success um, on your own streams uh, using just those techniques. It's worth mentioning as well, um, as, a, as someone who's tied you know, professionally, um, on, on various sort of levels. It's ever so easy if you're a tire already and you think of yourself as a good tire to overlook a lot of these principles, but learning about Kivari tying and Tenkara flies for me has been a great sort of leveler to make me really focus on my fundamentals. And I would say it's, it, it's improved my fly tying and it's improved my thought process mm. in my fly tying as well. So don't just write it off as, oh, they're pretty simple flies. There's a very, very sort of, profound underlying simplicity that yeah. will, will really really change the way well that, that ties into the next thing that i was going to say which is that you can take each of the standard patterns that you, we have in our collection of 12 and by using that knowledge of process because it's become so second nature that allows you to be creative and actually create your own variations which may well be more <laughs> effective particularly on your own rivers than the standard original pattern that you pick up and it's that that freeing sort of um, competence and ability yeah. by understanding the process. That's an amazing thing. There's a delicious dichotomy in these sort of patterns we've developed. I'm loving the alliteration there as yeah. well. <laughs> if you are struggling to get to grips with Kibari and you're just saying, for God's sake, just tell me what I should use and tie. Mm. If you follow every instruction for the tying of these flies, you will have yourself a wonderful box, a go anywhere box of Kibari patterns that will catch your fish all over the place if you're the kind of person that likes to improvise and the kind of person that likes to create something new and doesn't like to stick to the recipe book this collection gives you an amazing foundation from which like a springboard to get you improvising with the best sort of fundamentals i'd say it's almost a high board you know it's it's this is a good sort of benchmark control condition yeah. this these are yeah. proven these are tried and tested yeah. if you beat that you know raise the bar if you can but this, you know, you've got the confidence that you yeah. know that this is yeah. solid to start with. Yeah. So I think that's a huge thing. Yeah. That's a great point to bring so, up. Yeah. So sure. if, if you want the safety of following the recipe, mm -hmm. you've got it. If you want the launch pad for the stars, you've got that as well. It's a delicious dichotomy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worth getting that in a couple of times. Yeah. But here's the deal, right? So if you want this sort of stuff and you want to bring this to your own fishing, uh, we've got it all laid out in the new DVD that John's put together. So what's so different from any other tying DVD? Um, you've seen the DVD on screen. Inside the DVD, you'll see this inlay that features all 12 patterns. This is your bench side tying reference. So you can put that on your bench as you tie in any, of, any one of the patterns. And it's got a lovely list of ingredients for that pattern it's with a nice sort of specimen photo. It's worth saying that each of the specimens that made it into the collection and that weren't rejected you know they're all based on the authentic research that we've done in japan yeah. extensively yeah. and this we've tested a, it absolutely this is a crystallization of the fundamental patterns that we've seen common in many many anglers tenkara fly boxes yeah um, and we've made sure that, it, that they work you yeah. know that they are yeah. the real deal yeah um in terms of what's in the DVD itself, we could list off a, a long list and we can show a few little clips of what's well, I think going we on should do that, well. yeah. I mean, you know, first up, for me, there's a great feature, which is if you've never tied a fly in your life before, or if you're teaching someone who's in that position, John's put together a fantastic uh, beginner's bonus that walks you through all of the steps that you need yeah. to do, including things like the whip finish tool itself, yeah. um, a bunch of stuff on dubbing, all kinds yeah. of things that you there, need to be able to do. about 20 minutes of step-by-step, step. each one's chapterized individually, mm. and it sits separate from the main feature. So if you tie and you're watching the main feature, you're not being bothered by the very basic things. It gets straight on with the fly, yeah. start to finish, it treats you as if you can tie a fly. 
But if you can't tie a fly, you've got this wonderful side reference you can go to, learn that step, then come back and actually tie the fly in the DVD with the rest of us pro tires. Yeah, and so. I, <laughs> given the um, <laughs> given the fact that we've bigged up this, you know, this kind of universal box of you know dozen patterns go anywhere, uh, whatever. It would be a bit remiss of us to not include step by step instructions for every single one of those patterns. Yeah. So you'll definitely get that. That is basically <laughs> the the whole focus of the DVD. I sit down at that wonderful time bench that you've probably seen in the clips we've put on screen uh, with the delicious shoji screen behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I walk you through every single fly in this box, uh, step by step from start to finish. And as I'm going through, I try and give you points where you can improvise. You could use a different hackle. You could use a different color thread. You can apply the material slightly differently. I talk about different ways to put on a soft hackle and different ways to protect That's it. That's what I was going to say. Almost every pattern that's in the collection, John shows a different method for, for example, protecting uh, delicate body materials. Yeah, or like that peacock for, hurl. Yeah, tying off, off positions, they vary as yeah. well. So that yeah. each of the, it's kind of compounded um, that the, um, the, the, the amount of information is bigger than just, there's not just 12 different ways of tying yeah. the fly. Within each of those, there's three or four different tweaks that you can add in as well. So that yeah. whatever that, I can't even do the maths in my there's head. Probably there's probably three, three or four different ways to put peacock hurl on securely so yeah. that it doesn't come un unraveled when a trout bites it. Another really nice thing for me is that throughout when we're talking about the, or rather John, he's doing most of the present presenting in this one, but um, talking about the patterns themselves, a little bit of the origin information is put in there as well. So you get you get to join in and part of that story of that fly's kind of heritage. But we also pepper it with some examples to show that we were actually there doing that research. Yeah. So yeah. we've got some footage of stuff in Japan that we'll throw yeah. out to whilst the story of the, uh, the the development of each of those patterns is told. You'll see on the top, there's a title screen for each fly and it's got its name in Japanese as well as its name in English. And there's quite often an AKA Mm. for the person or the region so for example there's there's a pattern in here um, that many people would recognize as the takayama kabari mm. it's not strictly speaking the takayama pattern as on fujioka san's website mm. because that's got a very specific tie-in but that look has become synonymous with being called yeah. takayama yeah, yeah, yeah. so although it's technically a mendori sakasa kabari We'll explain all about what that means in the DVD <laughs> yeah, itself. Yeah. We put AKA Takayama Kabari. So if you've heard these names and you've seen these flies, when you're watching the DVD, you may get a familiar name well, drop up. And it's a way of crediting our sources as well. Absolutely. You know, it shows the, yeah. the inspiration for the flies that made it into the box. Yeah. You know, we, want to, yeah. we definitely want to, you know, pay tribute to the people yeah. who've actually developed these things as yeah. well. So that's yeah, a wonderful sort of element as well. Um it's probably not to put too fine a point on it, the information that is contained in that DVD, it has cost us literally tens of thousands of pounds for us to obtain it. Yeah. And it's absolutely been worth it, every yeah. single penny for ourselves to have that. So we, we want to share that and give you the same opportunity, but you may not have access to the, whether it's the travel capacity or whether it's just the contacts in Japan or whatever it is, it's not an easily accessible thing, certainly because of the language barrier. So a big thing for us is that, you know, we've gone and sort of done that research, but we don't want to just keep it to ourselves. But it has taken a huge amount of investment to do that. Absolutely. I would say the joy of owning the knowledge is worth it in itself. But the mm. joy of being able to go to a river with just a single fly box with a simple set of patterns rather than hedging your bets with half a dozen fly boxes that you never yeah, never, yeah, yeah. never get round to using, but you, you take them just in case, mm. like taking the bloody kitchen sink. <laughs> That that freedom to leave things behind and leave things out is as big a joy as having the knowledge in itself. It's a wonderful to, to shed the unnecessary. Yeah, absolutely. And that is, and that brings me beautifully into the point that I was going to make, which is that as well as the time that we spent in Japan, the whole approach and the benchmarking of that, um, the effectiveness of it, that's relied on over 30, I'm rocking on 30, 35 years each of fishing experience where we've applied that and made sure that this is, you know, the real deal. It's mm. not just kind of a snake oil kind of approach. It's like, you know, the absolute um, robust, proven, tried and tested techniques and patterns that work.
So how can you get your hands on this DVD showing you how to tie all of the flies in this box? <laughs> and it is a great cracking selection in that box. Do you think I've got a job on a game show demonstrating? Yeah, yeah you could be on a little pedestal <laughs> spinning round. Yeah, here's the deal. Um, in Time Honoured Tradition, we have the now almost famous Discover Tenkara Time Limited Offer. Yeah. So if you sit back and check out the bundle that we've, we've bust our asses to put together the best bundle that we could for you, greatest offer to reward people that want to get in now and just join us on the amazing success of, and just fun that we're having on stream with these techniques and with these flies. So check out the offer now. So in this offer, you'll get our brand new DVD with the Benchside Reference Guide and you get a free digital download of the DVD. That's a combined total of £55 or $78. But if you order before the closing date, we've got a launch offer of just £22 or $32, including worldwide delivery. So taking the knowledge to create these flies with you on your next 10 fishing trips works out at just £2.20 per trip. And then you've still got a lifetime supply each time you apply that knowledge. According to Google, you can't even buy a full jar of peanut butter for that. So which would you rather have? A part empty jar of peanut butter? Or the confidence of always having our hand-picked, tried and tested Kibari selection ready to go? So here's to your best season yet on stream.